All yeah, right. So, uh, yeah. Um, so I want to talk about non-abelian braiding in plaquette surface, plaquette surface code on noisy intermediate scale quantum devices. And this work was done in collaboration with uh, uh, our postdoc uh, fellow at Cornell, Yuri Lensky, and collaborators at Google Quantum AI, uh, Kostya and Igor. So um, braiding statistics is a notion that you take one particle around the other and you ask what is the, how, did, how does that st state of the system change? In um, 3D, your uh, loop can always be thought to uh, not include, include, the, include the particle and that you know, physics cannot depend on your perspective. So in 3D, you cannot define braiding statistics. But in 2D, uh, when your motion is totally uh, constrained to be in the plane, uh, you can change the state of the system. Anion is about uh, the change of the state of the system being something very different from fermion and boson. And when we think about uh, the uh, braiding statistics, we can either look at, uh, follow the motion of a particle in a movie, or we can look at the trajectory in space time, which is the world line. So what, what just happened here was a full circle, uh, one particle going completely around the other. Uh, this is equivalent topologically to two exchange processes, exchanging between particle one and two once and then again. So exchange is like half of a braid. Now a prototypic, prototypical example, sort of a textbook example that uh, illustrates how something can be non-abelian uh, anion is, a, is vortex bound Majoranas. Vortex bound, bound Majoranas are um, zero energy Bogliobdogen quasi particles bound to vortices. And because the vacuum here is a superconductor. Uh, the, these uh, Majoranas are not like Majoranas uh, in vacuum, but in uh, superconductor, they uh, end up seeing a flux of, uh, of pi. And uh, as a zero energy bully of the gem, uh, quasi particle, Majoranas are. Uh, are self satisfy self conjugacy condition, and uh, two Majoranas that are apart define one complex fermion shared between them, or there's a parity associated with uh, this fermion that are sh that is shared between the two Majoranas. So what is this uh, flux about? The flux comes about because when uh, the superconducting order parameter. Do you see my mouse, by the way? Uh, pointer. Let's see. Maybe this is better. So yes, when the super, yeah, okay, superconducting order parameter uh, acquires a phase of e to the i chi, because a uh, superconducting order parameter has two fermions in it, the fermion acquires half that phase. So around the vortex, the superconducting phase has to wind by two pi. That means uh, fermions see a phase of pi. Now the Bogliov of uh, the the Majorana particle here uh, would, it, which is a superposition of uh, particle and hole, would in general not transform in a, a simple phase relationship, but around the vortex where the uh, phase is two pi, uh, this is e to the i pi that is uh, overall sign. So uh, we can think of the Majorana that's going around to be seeing pi flux associated with the vorticity of this, uh, that's bound to uh, the other Majorana. When one particle went around the other, it sees the pi flux and that's this relationship. Now, why does that uh, change how we should think about this uh, many body state? Well, with, uh, uh, with just a pair of Majorana, it defines two-dimensional Hilbert space, whether that complex fermion exists or not. And uh, this half braid can, can be written in terms of the Majorana operators. 
as uh, in this following expression, which is a unitary transformation. Now, when I have four Majoranas, and if I started with uh, two of them in a uh, zero state and these two in a zero state as well, so that's uh, where they're coming from, the operation of braiding between Marana 2 and Marana 3. Now this full circle involves the braid happening twice, but this operation uh, is a matrix, this four dimensional matrix in the four dimensional Hilbert space defined by these four Marana's. Now the fact that this is a matrix says these operations depend on the history uh, order in which the uh, braiding occurred. And um, as such, uh, this actually changes the state within this vector space. And that's what makes these anions not a billion. Now, I, um, the fact that this uh, Majorana going around alpha two sees the pipe flux, um, we can keep track of this, uh, this world lines and associated with minus sign by uh, carefully following the world lines and remembering how they are transforming for each of the uh, half braid operation. But a convenient way to make sure that we don't lose track of path is to make a operator here that is the uh, fermion parity operator to be uh, manifestly gauge invariant. So alpha, F alpha, I, I don't see, where's, sorry. Uh, oh, maybe, yeah, good. So alpha, F alpha, I, I alpha, F alpha, I is a, a Hermitian operator, but it is not gauge invariant under electromagnetic gauge transformation. So we, we, we need to have this uh, Wilson line operator, which keeps track of the, uh, the fact that this uh, quasi-particle, this Majorana uh, went around and as this moves, the uh, Wilson line has to move with the particle. And this is a gauge invariant way of um, defining a state associated with uh, these two Majoranas, uh, these two Majoranas. So um, these uh, non-abelian anions uh, were proposed in early 2000s to be a, a platform for topological quantum computation because the, the information of um, one qubit is shared um, between two uh, Ising endions that are um, separated apart. Uh, the idea was that the, such a system would be robust, more robust against uh, local noise and local perturbation. However, um, efforts of trying to find these marinas, uh, these non abelian anions in physical system have uh, so far not been successful. Uh, although five half state is strongly um, suspected to be a, a, a state with uh, one quarter quasi particles, which are Ising, supposed to be Ising anions, um, being able to actually move their world lines in a controlled manner. It turned out to be challenging. P plus IP superconductor, the theoretical framework I discussed, um, there isn't a single material that is known to be, uh, believed to be P plus IP superconductor. So these efforts at trying to find uh, non abelian anions in a uh, material platform have been challenging. Um, one of the difficulty is that even if you have a state that is expected to host such particles, you need to be able to control their dynamics. So um, what is changing today? Well, uh, the, the new idea is, uh, well, there have been such ideas around. Idea is to make use of uh, simulators to simulate uh, these non-abelian anions and perhaps there we would have better control and we can execute these operations. The uh, simulator that's been realized recently by um, Google group is, uh, is the Toric code model, which has uh, only a billion anions. However, there were uh, earlier uh, literature pointing out that it is possible 
to um, embed non-abelian anions into an abelian model. For instance, by starting with toric code on a square lattice, which only has uh, two types of abelian anions, E and M, one can introduce lattice dislocation, which uh, acts as Ising anion and alters properties of the abelian anions that were originally present in the toric code model. However, topological defects uh, as, uh, implement, as um, envisioned here are not uh, obviously mobile objects. So it, is, it has not been clear how you can move them and braid them when uh, nevertheless, the, uh, being able to move these uh, uh, anions because it is, uh, the braiding is a unitary operation it, if you could move them and if you could encode um, a logical topological qubit, uh, braiding would be actually a gate operation on those uh, logical qubits. So we uh, started from this observation that uh, there are these uh, ideas that you can start from a surface code uh, or uh, Code being an example of a so-called surface code, start from a, a known model, and you can alter that model to introduce a non-abelian object. That was our starting point. But the challenge and the question is, how can we move these non-abelian objects in a controlled way? So I think of uh, immobile uh, anion as uh, an electric vehicle, EV, that does not have, does has a single charge battery. It you know, can't go really far. And um, that's not what we think of as EV. The reason why we're excited about electric vehicles these days is because they have battery that can be charged. And we will be excited to have Ising anions that can be moved at will. So how can we do this? We need to first prepare a good vacuum. For instance, um, B plus IP superconductor has superconductor as vacuum on top of which the uh, Marana bound states were uh, created. The fact that it is out of that non-trivial vacuum is what gave those Marana's and vortices uh, pipe flux. So we need to prepare a vacuum that can host um, anions. And once we prepare the vacuum, we should uh, create the anion pairs and uh, move them and um, and uh, demonstrate the, their non-abelian statistics. So this is what we would like to do. How do we start? We start with uh, the uh, uh, procedure or proposal, our proposal for preparing the vacuum. Our proposal is to start from a graph, which is a generalization of a square lattice. So square lattice of Tori code um, would be a subset of plaquette surface code as we dubbed it, or we can, you can think of plaquette surface code as an extension. Um, now, we like to think of this as a superset of um, Tori code. So what is the graph the, for the code? We uh, insist that there be vertices of a graph that are either four, um, connected to four other uh, part other particles. So for instance, this guy has one, two, three, four legs. This guy has one, two, three, four legs. Those are D4 Vs or degree four vertices. Um, like a surface code can also have degree three vertices. Here is one, one, two, three. Uh, there's another one, one, two, three. These are two degree three vertices. And it can also have degree two vertex. Um, this is an example of degree two vertex. So um, this is our notation for degree three and degree four, degree two and degree four, and uh, you can easily mark them. Um, Plaque surface code is defined on such a graph, and it is a stabilizer code where there is a stabilizer, set of stabilizers associated with each plaquette where uh, all those stabilizers mutually commute with each other. And the stabilizer condition is that the stabilizer for, for any one of them applied to 
the uh, the many body state should return the state itself. Now the stabilizer is going to be a product of Pauli operators around the plaquet. So for a particular plaquet here, this stabilizer will in involve the Pauli operators associated with each of the qubits. And uh, there is a unknown, yet unknown choice of what those uh, Pauli operators should be. So our uh, goal of building the vacuum, uh, one big part of that would be to figure out how to define this state that is to figure out the set of stabilizers. But even before we go into technical details, um, we can already make a very interesting observation purely by counting. If you think about total number of legs attached to vertices, so now if I say I count total number of legs attached to this vertex, there's one, two, three, four. I count total number of vertices attached to this vertex, there's one, two, three, but I just double counted this edge because every edge has two vertices um, on either end. This way of counting should lead result in uh, double the total number of edges. Now that double the total number of edges can be achieved by uh, first assuming all the vertices having four, uh, four deg degree four, and then recognize, oh, wait a minute, I have some D3Bs, which have one fewer um, leg, and I have some D2Bs, which have two fewer legs. So this is uh, evident equality, which we can easily count. Now, out of this equation emerges something interesting. First, let's notice, take, um, divide both sides by two. I have total number of edges equal to uh, two times the number of vertices minus half the uh, number, the n sigma, which I just defined to be uh, number of D3Bs plus double the number of D2Bs. Now, enter this into the uh, well-known Euler's formula with Euler characteristic associated with the manifold. Uh, in this case, we're considering infinite plane to keep things simple, in which case this chi is zero. Now, what this says is uh, there is a number of the relationship between number of vertices and faces is half the n sigma that we defined. Now, why is this interesting? Well, the, each vertex has qubit, each face has a stabilizer. So the right-hand side is the difference between total information in the system um, associated with each qubit and the constraint. When the two matches, there isn't any more uh, dynamical degree of freedom left, but when the two are not matching, we see that the number, this number n sigma is, amounts to half the uh, remaining information. So each sigma carries half of the unconstrained logical qubit. That's the first observation we can make. So that already tells us that having n sigma be non-zero is going to be a way to have uh, topological qubits. Now to uh, in order to make progress on uh, understanding what, what, what type of uh, topological qubits we can have and how we will move them, it turns out to be very convenient to um, enlarge the Hilbert space first by going from the space of qubits to four Majoranas and then um, impose constraints so that you get back the correct dimension of the Hilbert space, but having these Majoranas would uh, prove to be very uh, helpful. Before we go into how having these mariners help and what the constraint Im implies, we can quickly look at what the, uh, uh, how we think about D4B, D3B, and D2B in terms of these mariners. D4B would mean when I place the mariners on a diamond as an extension, it, it, as an expanded version of my vertex, um, each of those Majoranas 
can be part of a link to the neighboring qubit. Graphically speaking, and if I have D3V, I have three uh, legs coming out. I can attach those three legs to three of the marinas, and there will be one marina left unattached. For D2V, I would have two marinas left unattached. Now, this is already starting to tell us that there's perhaps uh, this remaining Majorana degree of freedom that we might be able to use. But uh, we saw for uh, uh, zero energy bound states of vortices in P plus AP superconductor, we need that Z2 flux, pi flux. Now here too, for these Majoranas, we would need some uh, pi flux uh, for them to act properly as Ising anions. That uh, pi flux actually comes about when we add the constraint to get the correct dimensionality for the Hilbert space. I start with qubit, I need with the two dimensions, I need to get back to two dimension. Once I have expanded, I have to apply constraint. And the constraint here is in the in the form of the product of all four myronas. Now um, ensuring that uh, my uh, Hilbert space of Majoranas actually can match the Hilbert space of qubits. That's my physical degree of freedom. Um, using this projection means I have to ensure this uh, eigenvalue equation, which is another way to say that my state has to be invariant under Z2 gauge transformation. Alpha has two values, plus minus one. So this is a Z2 gauge transformation. So now I have to get back from these uh, Majoranas to qubits if I'm going to figure out how to uh, define the stabilizers. Well, I, so I'm looking for uh, operators in the spin Hilbert space, uh, which can be all built out of Pauli operators. So I'm looking for how to represent a Pauli operator. Now, because uh, only Hermitian operator I can get out of two Majoranas is I times the product of two Majoranas. Um, this immediately says I have to decide on which direction to assign my Pauli operator. Let's say if I am going to choose these two Majoranas to define a Pauli operator for me, it makes a difference whether I have the arrow point in this direction or that direction because there is a sign difference. Furthermore, the fact that I have this projection constrains that these Two of my um, operators that I define would have to be the same. Have to be the same, and these would also have to be related, um, up to, same up to sign. The fact that I have to pick a particular number and the and the uh, the fact that uh, Marinas all anti commute with each other says we need to have odd number of clockwise ones. So here I have odd number um, three counterclockwise and one clockwise. I need odd number of clockwise ones. And that's precisely what's called Castling condition on a graph, which was developed for um, diameter models. So now, um, remembering that uh, operator alpha four, I alpha four, alpha one, and I alpha three, alpha one, have to anti commute because of the alpha one that they share. We can realize that the uh, Pauli operator associated with this um, diamond bond and that diamond bond will have to anti commute. So now well, our job is to recognize that, okay, so here is one Pauli and there's another Pauli and they should anti commute. And that is all I need, uh, all I can represent with this Marana degree of freedom. Now this is a, a cheat sheet that allows us to go back and forth between Majoranas and the uh, physical um, qubit space. But now we want to define the stabilizers. In order to define the stabilizers, uh, we have to be able to define something that lives on a plaquette. To define something that's living on a plaquette, we have to decide on how each of these diamonds are going to be linked. Now, um, we can already observe any the uh, Hermitian operator that we can form out of these uh, out of pairs um, outside of each diamond would 
uh, because they do not share a minor uh, particle, they all commute with each other. So all of these are going to be uh, totally fine to use in a, a stabilizer. One thing we have to figure out what to do is about um, this marina that is not participating in that bond. So it turns out we can actually uh, uh, de define the stabilizers in a consistent way um, that is uh, respecting the gauge invariance uh, of the projection by uh, adopting Castellan, this Castellan orientation on all the bonds. And once I have this Castellan orientation on all the bonds, and I have uh, this uh, cheat sheet that I have made for each of the diamonds, I can uh, form the uh, stabilizer by uh, multiplying all the uh, Paulis associated with each of the qubits. So this um, operator, by A, I mean something like X or Y or Z. So this operator is associated with this qubit. This operator is associated with this qubit. Collecting the correct Pauli operator would give me a stabilizer. So now to go from a graph to stabilizer, this is all we need to know. However, we have to keep track of this minus signs uh, that is showing up everywhere. Once we can keep track of the minus signs using the Castellan orientation, I can I now have a dictionary to go from a uh, 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 rule following uh, orientation to the set of stabilizers. So that is my vacuum. Now that was a lot of work, but uh, from here on, it's turn it's going to turn out to be rather simple. So once I have the stabilizers in place to create Ising anion pairs, all I have to do is to forget that this bond existed. How is this bond defined? This bond is defined by there being one stabilizer for this plaquette and another stabilizer for this plaquette. Well, if I take the product of those two stabilizers and define a new stabilizer for this enlarged plaquette, that is a way to remove the bond. And now I have created I think any pairs. In a familiar square lattice example, that would be to remove this bond and create a pair of Ising anions. So now we've created Ising anion pairs, now we have to figure out how to move them. Um, now we are seeing repeatedly, you can take two Mayranas, uh, multiply it by I, and that gives me a Hermitian operator. Um, if I choose some alpha one and some alpha zero. And if I envision a operator operation, a, a unitary transformation that swaps the two, uh, that transformation would be able to give me changes in the geometry of the graph. It can also allow me to move the anions and also measure the state of anions. So uh, this, this would be an example of uh, moving an anion. Now the remaining job is to figure out how to do this in a gauge invariant manner and independent of the choice of the orientation. So turns out if we want to make sure something is gauge invariant, we want to uh, slap in a Wilson line operator. And the remaining job is to figure out what that Wilson line operator is. Once I have this um, Hermitian object, P of gamma, um, which could be made of a string of Pauli operators, this operation, this unitary transformation would take the following form. So um, I am running out of time, I believe, so I'm going to skip some of the details. At, at the end of the day, um, it comes out that the proper Wilson line operator has two parts that are conveniently uh, factorizing. One part is keeping track of the original PSC uh, bonds, the dark black lines. And the other part keeps track of the entire path. We have to choose the convention for choosing the path um, to be able to write down a systematic rule. Uh, once you take this convention and find the path, uh, 
you can recognize that one piece of this uh, Wilson line operator uh, is actually what's going to give you the stabilizer if I have a closed plaquette. So as long as I respect the stabilizer condition uh, I, and stay within my vacuum, I can just focus on this uh, castling counting where this n of n gamma of k is counting the number of upstream arrows. So trusting that these um, assignments were done following the rules, what all we have to do is to actually figure out how many times I have the violation. Uh, I, I have the upstream arrows. So going this way, I find the upstream arrow here, upstream arrow here, upstream here, and upstream here. So there are a total four of them. Now, um, having this Wilson line allows us to turn any figure that we can make of graph into a, a physical operator. And that operator can be used to uh, give us unitary transformation. Now, um, a great use of this is to see that this uh, operate Wilson line operator actually gives us non-abelian statistics. If I consider this loop, which does not enclose any um, D3V or D2V compared to this loop that encloses one D3V, we can recognize that uh, this upstream count here highlighted in yellow is three. Here upstream count went up to six. But there is an interesting relationship between this number of upstream count and the number of uh, D3Bs or D3Bs enclosed in the loop. Here having one D3B enclosed in the loop, here having zero D3B enclosed in the loop. From these matching, we can see that the, this parity operator from the um, Castellan counting over the whole loop matches up with the, uh, with the sign of minus one to the n sigma plus one, where n sigma is defined as uh, Ising anion. So this, this is a, a proof of these anions having um, Ising anion statistics. But ultimately, in order to see this happen and uh, move things around, we need to be able to implement actual gates. And to turn this into a gate assignment, we uh, remember how we defined the uh, Pali operators around the diamond and um, being careful to include the uh, factor of i whenever we go around the wedge uh, because uh, that would be a product of two Pali's which is not Hermitian. We're trying to get Hermitian operators. So everywhere we go, we're gonna pick up the Hermitian operators. And this is actually the uh, string of Pauli operators, which can be exponentiated to give us unitary transformation, which uh, boils down to a, a, a short set of um, two cubic gates. So now we figure out how to braid them and uh, we can use the same Wilson line between now two D3Vs to measure the state of the qubit encoded on the D3Vs. So now I'm getting close to the end. Let's um, look at what kind of experiment that we're proposing. What is the minimal system to have Ising anions? Well, you need to have at least four sites. But if you have four qubit, qubits by um, assigning the stabilizers in this geometry, we can have uh, four Ising anions. It's just that they are all connected and they cannot go anywhere. So we cannot do anything with them. Minimal system where we can um, have Ising anions braiding is 10 physical qubits. Now these legs are meant to say they are extending and connecting to another um, qubit. Um, that is to say this system is uh, extendable. Now, uh, for these uh, 10 physical qubits, we can, we're gonna start with pair creation and we are now starting to move and keep moving. And that was um, a full uh, exchange operation. So that's a half braid. To get to the full braid, uh, one going around the other, 
which is going to change the uh, state of my uh, the uh, fermion parity uh, is a matter of repeating that process. One exchange and one more exchange gives me the full uh, braid. And um, the uh, f following through the rules of uh, of this uh, braid operator, if you do it twice, you end up with um, these states that are different from what you started with. And the physical evidence of that would be appearance of fermions, um, this fermion and this fermion, appearance of fermions that um, didn't exist at the beginning, although the geometry looks exactly like as you started with. Now to summarize, I've uh, talked about a proposal of uh, what we call plucket surface code. It is a stabilizer code on a graph with uh, D3Bs, D4Bs, and D2Bs. And we, we have seen that uh, D3Bs have one uh, Majorana and D2Bs have two Majoranas. They uh, see a pi flux attached to them, just like in uh, people's IP superconductors. And we've seen that we can use Wilson line to move these uh, D3Bs, the non-abian anions, or measure the state associated with them. What we find really exciting is that this can be all done with a system with just 10 qubits and with very uh, minimal um, requirements. And this seems very uh, doable given the uh, accomplishment of uh, the Google team. Uh, last year where they uh, demonstrated the Tori code without any non abelian anions. So um, with, with that, let me uh, conclude and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thanks to Professor Unakim for a very inspiring talk. So we may uh, have some questions. Is there Questions from the audience. Uh, we have questions from Aris. Sorry. So I'm just trying to understand the Castellan orientation better. Um, is this uh -huh. orientation imposed so that the the number parity uh, sector is is chosen either odd or even on each qubit. Is that the reason for this orientation? No, um, that's not. Uh, let, let me go back to that. So first, first step was to choose the orientation on the uh, each qubit, uh, um, indeed. But uh, it was just a convenient way, graphical way of keeping track of the fact that. Uh, keeping track of the fact that uh, we have the parity uh, projection and um, the two operators, uh, because of the parity projection, these two operators have to be the same and these two have to be the same. Um, also, there is the fact that um, these, um, what else do I have? And, and and yes, so so the the this projection and and x twice. First of all, it it means that these two and these two have to be the same. Um, it also means as I uh, as I go around um, for uh, for these operators uh, because this arrow. So let let me specify what I mean by the arrow. Arrow means I'm going to assign a Pauli operator. Now. Um, to for, and and this Castellan condition is about the orientation of the arrows. So why do these have to be going out this way? Well, because uh, they share this Majorana. So the Castellan uh, con uh, condition here is a graphical way of keeping track of a the fact that we have to uh, respect this projection and um, stay within that uh, reduced Hilbert space. And B, because we're trying to um, 
def define a uh, uh, Pali operator or uh, permission operator with this Maranas. That's where this arrow comes from. Um, when you share a uh, Maranas, there has to be the proper anti commutation relationship with a uh, proper sign. So it's a, it's really keeping track of the signs uh, because a a dagger a, a, a prime A, if A and A prime are both Pali operators, A prime A and A, A prime are not the same. I don't know if I answered your question. But, okay, so, but this projection, it does project to the number parity to, to A. Yes, it does. Projection to projects it. to the number parity sector, right. But if it was just for the projection, I didn't need Castellan. I, I see. Um, yeah. Projection can be implemented just through the gauge condition. The castle is coming from, I, I have a desire. I have a desire to go from this uh, Mariana space. Mariana space is nice for doing comp um, computations, but to implement this on a physical device, I need to go back to qubits. I need to uh, make a mapping, uh, I need to, fix a mapping between the Majorana space and the qubit space. Although the, the uh, with the constraint, the dimensions of the two space match, uh, that does not specify how I should map from one space to the other. But I need that map in order to say, well, this picture means these set of Pauli operators. So it is in trying to uh, make a mapping to the Pauli operators, where the need for these arrows come. And once we have those arrows, we realize to, uh, for uh, all of this to make sense with alphas being Mairana and being under uh, the constraint, we need, we, the, what we end up with for the arrow orientation is actually the castling condition. Okay, thank you. Is there any other questions? Uh, I have also a short question. So you mentioned that to make uh, this anions mobile, you need a 10 qubits. So uh, to me, uh -huh. so there is some, or at least the number of the operators we act. So is there some kind of a fundamental constraint we can think of in terms of like generic graph or is it like uh, we just 10 qubits? Oh, 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 good, good question. Okay. Um. So here, um, that was four qubits. Clearly, they cannot move because for the uh, anions to move, there has to be at least there has to be a d four v. Anions are d three v's or d two v's. They can only move to another d four v up to a d four v. Between two anions, you can only measure state. You cannot move them in. So um, I need a D4V, uh, which means I need at least one more anion, uh, one more qubit. So that gets me to five. So imagine I put a qubit down in the middle. I can move one over there and, and I, can, uh, I can keep moving them, but I cannot quite braid. Bra there isn't enough space to braid them. So when you work through that um, in the geometry that is starting from square graph. So th in this kind of geometry, um, 10 qubit is what you need in order to break them. Um, you need at least four to create the pairs and you need space in the middle for them to uh, move around. Okay, I see. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, is there any other questions from audience? Uh, if not, then uh, we again thank uh, Professor Nakim for interesting talk and we can probably move to the next speaker. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>